So over the past few years, I've been investing in residential real estate and renting those properties out through the Section 8 program. It's a great strategy to implement, and if you do things the right way, you can be very successful at it. I mentor and consult with other investors and also made a course on Section 8 investing, which is phenomenal. However, a few months back, while I was scrolling through YouTube, I came across a video on assistant living investing that seemed very interesting. The entire concept and the potential returns really sparked my interest, and it sparked my interest enough for me to enroll at the local community college in their assistant living manager certification class. I figured since I already had a property that I believe would make a great assistant living facility, I might as well see how it would turn out. Worst case scenario, I don't like this business and I turn the property back into a Section 8 investment. No big deal, but it's at least worth a shot. And people have asked me that if this means that I will no longer be producing Section 8 content. No, this does not mean that. I'm still very much pro Section 8 investing and I'm still consulting with clients and course members all the time. In fact, in honor of my YouTube channel reaching 10k subs use coupon code 10k subs to receive $150 off the section 8 investors course where you'll get the mentoring the coaching and all the resources you need to be successful not sure how long it's going to last so take advantage of it while you can but anyway assistant living investing has sparked my interest and not too long ago i went to my final day of class it's the last day of this assistant living class. Once I pass the final today, I will be a certified assistant living manager in the state of Maryland. It's been a long six weeks, but we finally here. One step closer to opening my assistant living facility. Let's go. So on the last day of class, the teacher decided to let us play a game of Jeopardy to see how much we've learned. And surprisingly enough, I didn't do too bad. That's cheating. That's cheating. Uh, I was next, Ms. Jackson. Under my notes. You can use your notes. Okay. Tim. Who is the alternate um, assistant living manager? Very good. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it because... Hey, tally me up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> tally me up. 500. That was 500. Oh, the question of who is the ALM? Who assumes the duties of Assumes. Right. I'm All right, we're going to go with uh, numbers and letters for 400, please. Numbers and letters for 400. I ended up coming in third place, which is not too bad at all. This is... Um, I'm on my way to Baltimore's Housing Authority, the home ownership office, to drop off some paperwork. I don't know if you guys saw a few videos back, I did a video about one of my clients who's a voucher holder, how he's buying a house. As I make this trip up to Baltimore, Baltimore's like an hour and a half from me. I think this is going to be my last client that I represent in Baltimore. It's just too far. The housing authority, they're, they're so irritating with this. They want all of the paperwork to be hand delivered. So my client, he actually lives in Texas. So I'll go print the paperwork out at Staples and then I'll have to drive up here to drop it off. But it's not like a one-time thing. It's like, okay, now they're going to need some other paperwork. And then a few weeks later, they need some other paperwork. So it can be irritating, but I just started realizing like, you know what, I'm about to fall back from representing clients in Baltimore. Because even if it's a, an investor or someone looking for a home, I'd have to take them to go show houses and it's just too far from me. So I'm I'm really focusing on the area that I live in. Actually, I just started this, this Charles County Living in Real Estate channel and it focuses on real estate in Charles County. That area is really growing right now, so. But yeah, I'm gonna really focus on the Charles County area. It's very convenient for me, I already live there. And it's a growing county and the real estate market there is really hot right now, so. If you guys want to, if you're from the DMV area, you can you can subscribe to my other channel. It, I think it just hit 100 subscribers, so y'all can check that out. It's all local, it's just Charles County and, and local uh, content, but yeah. in the mail 
I just checked the mail, blocked my address off. But yeah, it just came in the mail. Excuse me, I'm here in my robe and slippers. But let's open this thing. Let me see if I could let's set this up. Matter of fact, let me come over here. That's good enough. Okay. All right, that's what it's looking like. Open it up. Certificate of completion awarded to Timothy Lee. In acknowledgement of the successful completion of the series of courses required for the assistant living manager program, 80 hours. So if you're gonna be a manager of an assistant living facility, you have to have completed this course. This is in Maryland. So anywhere in Maryland to be a manager, you need to take this course. So I figured I'm gonna take this course since I'm gonna open my own. That way I won't have to hire a manager and I can cut costs. So I'll, I'll be managing my own for now, starting off. But eventually I, I wanna get it to the point where I can ex just hire managers maybe and, and just have them at different facilities and I just be more hands off. But right now, starting out, I'm gonna take this serious. I'm going to be the manager um, as well as the owner, and that'll help me cut some costs. But I'm glad I took the course because you do learn a lot, uh, a lot of the rules and regulations. I learned a whole lot, and I'm just looking forward to starting this journey. But yeah, I, I took the six-week program at PG Community, and um, my teacher was great. My classmates were great, and this is what it was all about. So the main thing that sparked my interest in investing in assisted living facilities was, first and foremost, the potential income. The amount of money that can be made from one facility, even after all expenses are paid, can be 15 to 20 times more than what that same property would make as a Section 8 investment. For example, with Section 8, you're renting one house to one family. But with assisted living, you're renting one house to five to 10 different individuals, all paying you what that Section 8 family is paying you, if not more. So my six bedroom property can rent for about 30 $3,800 to a voucher holder. And after I subtract the $2,800 mortgage, I'm getting $1,000 a month. Now let's say this same six bedroom property is licensed for eight bids as an assisted living facility. If eight people are paying me $3,800 a month, which is actually pretty low for this area, then that comes to over $30,000 a month. And after you pay your staff, your mortgage, and all your other expenses, let's say that comes to about $20,000, you're still bringing in about $10,000 monthly in profit. So that is what obviously caught my attention. Now granted, this is a real business and even though section 8 investing should be treated like a business assistant living is a lot less passive a lot more hands-on and requires more work there are a lot more rules and regulations that you must abide by but since this is a real business there's a lot more access to capital like SBA loans they're more willing to lend you hundreds of thousands of dollars off the fact that you have a legitimate income generating business and that money can be used for whatever so those are some of the options I want to explore later on down the line but anyway like I said this is only one property I'm turning into an assistant living facility and i hope you guys follow me along this journey let's see how this turns out but i'm still going strong with section 8 investing again use coupon code 10k subs to get 150 dollars off the course and like always can't wait to see you guys in the next video